Hello guys, my name is Joseph Krause. Today I want to make a very important video to bring awareness to anti-Semitism and I want to expose a federal uh, program called Job Corps, which is a trade school. So I'm going to go into a little bit of details in a minute. So please watch this video till the end so I can get to all the details. All right, so um, I went to Job Corps, um, which is a trade school program funded by the federal government, which has a budget of almost $2 billion a year. And they have a lot of locations um, nationwide. And um, the particular job corps that I went to is called Delaware Valley Job Corps. It's located in Calico, New York. So Delaware Valley Job Corps, which is operated by Adam and Associates. And Adam and Associates operates, I think, um, 13 other job corps. So which, I don't know, it's a big percentage of how many job corps they are is managed by Adam and Associates. So that's the one that I went to. So there's a lot. It was a horrible experience, a very bad place. They take advantage on young people while taking a lot of money from the federal government, pretending to help youth to train them for careers while they, it's a waste of time for everybody, um, while taxpayer money goes to garbage. But that's a separate conversation. Um, it was it was very not productive, the whole program. They just um, have numbers that they have to maintain. Like, let's say, 100 students they need to have on campus at all times. So they will, um, let's say even if a student will be caught with drugs or assault or anything, a lot of times they will keep the student or put a blind eye to what is happening on campus so they can keep students, so they don't have to kick out anybody and they can keep as many people because they have, a you know, like um, numbers of how many students they need to have. And that's also why they're trying to give as little education as possible while you're there so you can be there for a couple of years so that way they maintain their number of how many students they need to have on campus at all time. So that's one of the biggest problems. So that translates to um, being months in classroom without really learning anything. And a lot of times there's just students sitting around. And, um, and for example, my instructor was just um, a super, a guy with a big ego, just all day sitting on his chair and talking about how good, of, how good and smart of a person he is while teaching nothing. And same thing is in GED school, where you're supposed to get your GED or high school diploma and you just sit around there and don't, there's not really anything being thought over there. They're just trying to push through the day, day after day. So they can keep as many students. Um, that's how they're able to, you know, like a lot of federal programs, unfortunately, work that way. Um, so again, this this particular job core is called um, Adam and Associates. And things that I'm saying right now is true for a lot of people, especially that particular job core. Um, I'm not saying this is the general rule, but it is a big problem that if anybody here can do something about it, it's, it's important. Okay. Now I want to get to the part where what happened to me, um, how I was um, attacked, um, anti-Semitic attack against me. So if you guys don't know, I grew up in the Hasidic Jewish ultra Orthodox community. Um, and after I left, I went to a couple places, but then I went to Job Corps. So all the staff and everybody knew that my background that I was, I grew up Hasidic and they also knew that uh, my English wasn't very good and I couldn't read very well. And this is another part where they didn't accommodate me for that. They were being always very rude to me when I said I couldn't read very well or why I was behind in my schoolwork sometimes. Um, even though I explained them multiple times and even showed them articles, how I'm, how people are writing about me, where I come from, so I'm not just making it up. Um, for example, the New York Times article posted um, about the Hasidic um, schools. Was, um, so yeah, so now I wanna get to the story. Um, one day, there was there was a lot of students um, who were uh, bullying me a lot for, for being Jewish, even though I left the community, but they still believe that I'm Jewish because I grew up Jewish, you know? So, but either way, they were they were doing anti-Semitic attacks for that. Uh, most of the time it wasn't physical, but it was, it was hard bullying okay so a lot of times it was happening in front of the teachers and the staff and they did nothing about it or they turned out a blind eye and as a matter of fact the this the teacher the instructor that I was most of the day with right the main teacher and for me his name is um mr tom i forgot his last name um he's the facility maintenance um instructor at the time um maybe tom hillary Eagle? i don't i don't remember um so yeah he he was actually also very anti-semitic guy openly talking um to the students about how anti-Semitic conspiracies and, and stuff like that, saying it openly in front of me, in front of everybody. And I just I, I just kept quiet. I, I didn't know what to say. I, I did sometimes report some stuff, not officially, because one of the reasons is because the, the very people who were being anti-Semitic were the people that I was supposed to report, the teachers, the staff. So I just, as long as I didn't really get physical attack, it, it didn't really, you know, I just, I'm saying I just shut up and kept going. So till one day um, where some students threatened me they were gonna physically attack me for being Jewish, and um and I knew it was very serious and dangerous. Um and if if some of you guys don't know, Job Corps is a place where a lot of um like criminals um or kids who are 
but I don't know how to explain it, but not the best uh, part of, of society type of kids come to Jack Court. It's, it's a pretty known thing. It's not like college where, you know what I mean, where educated people, it's usually people who dropped out of school, people, troubled people basically, right? So, so some people have um, prior, um, what is it called, criminal records and, you know, stuff like that, violent people. Um, and so, yeah, and it's anywhere between the ages of uh, 16 to 24. So some people, I was, uh, I was young at the time, some people were 24 and I was like uh, 18 or whatever, how old I was at the time, right? Um, so now going back to the, um, yeah, so when I figured out that I was going to be attacked, I was told, I immediately, um, try to go that day to report it as an emergency, right? Not like, oh, we're going to go and fill out paperwork that I have a, like, let's say a sexual harassment, uh, uh, anti-Semitic, uh, claim, whatever. No, it was an immediate thing where maybe I should have called the police, right? But we were always told that we don't really call the police on that campus. You go to the staff, there's security on campus. Like nobody ever really called the police. If there if there is a problem, they have their own security, right? They, you can never even leave campus. It's it's a to campus, you know, it operates by itself. So um so I went immediately to to the center director. Her name is Miss Linda. So I went to Miss Linda's office and I knocked and I said I told her what's going on and she was super rude and didn't take it seriously and she actually yelled at me. And I actually have a recording. I hope to put the recording right. Two person, like um, okay, but this is not. I cannot address this. It has. This is an. E, this is an equal employment opportunity okay. concern. You have to go to the student EEO officer. All right, but you want to listen. Uh, let me tell you what was happening because I, I can, Joseph, right. because of because the, of the nature of yeah. your complaint, I have nothing. To, what happens is my staff conduct the investigation. Because I can't, it's a it's a, it's a very important issue. There's a whole per, uh, you can read the SOP. Uh, you cannot report your concern to me. You need to go right next door and report the concern to Miss Bivers. She's in charge of that. But can I can I finish and um, and still tell me if I still have to go? Because he said things like he's a Nazi and he wants to kill Jews and he found a, he, he hold like like a weapon. He said this is a good thing to kill Jews with. This. Do I still have to go to that room where I can talk to you? No, that's 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 a race. It's a race. It's discrimination based on race or religion. That correct? was like a, a yes, but that was like a, a threat. That was like that's a, an because, EEO complaint. Yes. All right. Cool. Did he say to you that he was going to kill you with the weapon? Yes, he said. He see. He was. He has been saying I can say aiding. Okay. He's been saying a lot. I think he has to be like turned. So you need to go and report it. That's an it's an E E O complaint. I don't know what that. Is. Where who is that? I just Miss Bibber right next door. That door. Yes. Okay. Directly across from TK. All right. You have to. I, well, I, I don't feel safe because. I'm telling you to walk all right, all right. out of my office. And go to the door. I can't. Uh, Joseph, no, no, I'm just. I'm, I'm, you're not listening. If you don't feel safe, you need to go and do that. Do what I'm telling you. Uh, to I'm do. doing it right now. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, well, she's 
Of, of the interaction and I told her they want to kill me and she still yelled at me and said go to somebody else's office report it don't don't report this to me even though she was the lady who was supposed to take care of this she was very involved in the day today for example a couple times when I wear it was during the COVID this right so for example if I was wearing my mask under my nose I got sent to her office and she talked to me about it so, so she was very involved um, but it seemed like only the things that she wants to be involved but when a, a student was feeling in danger for being attacked because he's Jewish she didn't seem to care much um, and she didn't seem to uh, saw it as an as an emergency. So, um, anyways, um, as you can imagine, and as you can hear in the video, when I went to the office of the other, like the I guess the HR uh, lady, she was obviously not there, right? And I couldn't find her that day, so I didn't have it who to report. And then when the day came to the end, you go to the camp, uh, to the dormitories, and, and whatever you go eat dinner, and then you go to sleep. Um, so when I when I that night, like a little bit later in the night, um, as I knew it was gonna happen, there was some students. Um, I don't want to. I don't even remember all of their names. Um, yeah, I just remember the, the name, main name is Aiden. Um, he, he broke in and with other students, they snuck in from other parts of the campuses into my room and they attacked me, they threw chairs at me, they hit me with different things. So now because I saw at the end of the day that there wasn't gonna be a way for me to report and I was pretty confident they were gonna attack me as I just said they did, I took um, like a tool, right? I took, I took um, a tool from the tool office, let's say something like this, right? A screwdriver, because in case if it gets really to a uh, life and death situation, I can protect myself with something because they were hitting me with, with pieces of metal and pieces of wood. And, and even though they did that, I never even took out the tool, right? Um, because I, I knew that that will even escalate the situation. So I just, I just had that, I took that from the tool room because we were doing construction, right? That was my trade. So I took it up, I put it in my pocket. I didn't like steal it or anything. I just, that was the tools that we were working with during the day. And, and by the way, it was very common. That campus is so dangerous that a lot of times students were stealing uh, knives in, in um, you know, hand knives and whatnot, uh, saws uh, or saw blades where other students were fighting with each other. With each other. So this just gives you an idea of what that campus is like. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's with troubled kids. Um, so... Uh, yeah, so I had that tool. So the next day, for some reason, and by the way, I don't remember all the details. I never wrote it down exactly what happened. It's been um, more than a year since it has happened. So maybe I'm saying the order of how things happen a little bit wrong. Um, but I'm just saying right now basically what happened, okay? So I'm not, don't quote me on, on, on anything, you know what I mean? All right, so basically, so yeah, that night they attacked me. And um, they also stole a lot of my stuff when they walked out of the room. And um, the next day which again, I don't remember exactly how everything, I think I either went to report it or they found out about it. Um, but I actually think the way they found out is because they saw there was the tool missing because they keep a very strict inventory of all the tools. And um, and they saw that it's missing and they looked at the cameras, I guess, and they saw me taking it. And I told them why I had it. And that's when I told them, go look at the cameras, how they were went into my room and attacked me. So they refused to do that because because it was about six, five or six students there who broke into my room and attacked me, right? They refused to look at the cameras and verify that I was attacked because if that happens, they will have to um, expel six students, which will impact their numbers. That was probably one of the reasons, right? And also because they would just didn't like me, um, I believe because I was Jewish. Um, so yeah, so long story short, they, they, they called me into the office and they, they started yelling at me, um, a couple different people. And, um, and by the way, there was one important thing that I forgot to say. My instructor that I said earlier, Mr. Tom, who was who was um, anti-Semitic and racist, by the way, he showed me one time before this happened on his ankle. He has on his feet. He has a swastika tattoo, like a Nazi tattoo. And he told me that was part of like a white uh, national gang, whatever it is. So you can you can understand how I felt like I didn't who am I going to report this to. And I think he still works there. So Mr. Tom has a swastika tattoo on his feet, under his boots. He showed it to me after class. So, um. Yeah, and that was the same guy who was yelling with the with the center director, Miss Linda, at me. After I was attacked, they were blaming me for everything. So anyways, then they wanted to expel me because I had a weapon, right? So um, while that was going on, they locked me up in a room. It was in the middle of winter. They locked me up in a room for more than 24 hours. It was cold in there. There was no blankets, no food, no water. And um, Mr. Tom stayed that day later, and he snatched my phone out of my hands. And I believe that's when he deleted some of the videos that I, that I recorded during everything that was happening. So I have very few videos left. I'm going to try to upload whatever I found into this video, edit it in. Um, yeah, so that, um, so the next day, uh, yeah, that was, that was, that was, that's what happened. So 
I was attacked and I believe that um, maybe one of the students, one of the like five or six, whatever the number was, there was a lot of, I didn't even remember all the names who broke in because I was sh shielding my face and with blankets and whatnot while they were throwing stuff and it happened very quick. So it was basically a gang broke into my room and they attacked me. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's the thing here. Um, Job Corps is a very racist, anti-Semitic place and it's not good. I don't, I don't recommend to go there and uh, shame on you Job Corps. Um, shame on you, Miss Linda. Shame on you, Mr. Tom, who has a swastika tattoo and is employed in a federal um, job as a teacher, right? Influencing students. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe. Uh, follow me on Instagram and have a good day. Thank you.